YouTube. What the crap's going on? And welcome to the first public day of Gamescom, though it is day two for me, so I got some uh, footage here. I do not have in-game footage yet from Warhammer 2. I am working to get some footage from them. I'm not sure if I'll get it this week, but I do intend to drop by and do a developer interview, and I have gotten to play the battles that they have in the booth, and the booth was pretty happening. Uh, a lot of people excited to see Total War Warhammer and a Doom Wheel, of course. Um, so in any case, yeah, they have a couple of battles playable at the booth. I was able to play uh, two, two different quest battles. One where I was leading Skrulk against the Lizardmen, and uh, Skrulk is, of course, the Skaven. And then another where you're leading Malekith uh, against the High Elves. And the Malekith battle was pretty fun. I took a pretty quick liking to Malekith, to be honest. Um, so the game feels very good. Um, the battles are very similar to Warhammer 1. And I should be able to get my hands on campaign as well before I leave Gamescom. Now, bear in mind that the footage that I'm going to bring you is not going to be my footage unless they manage to find a way to capture it. Um, it is simply going to be um, uh, some footage that they capture, and I'm going to give you my feelings since I've actually had the game hands-on now at this point, which I hadn't previously had the opportunity to do. Um, but in any case, yes, the... The game is good, it's very solid, plays very fun, great booth, a lot of excitement around it. Um, the, the folks that I've talked to, I spent some time talking to Dogbert, or James Given, I, I just call him Dogbert I guess. Um, he, he had a lot of interesting insight on what's going on with the game. You wouldn't believe the amount of work that these people put into the launch. Now I know some of you be like, yeah, you're sitting here, you're taking CA side. No, I just, I work in the private industry, as a matter of fact, and I know how much work goes into big projects like this. And I'm not saying that means the game's going to be perfect, or that I would instantly forgive them for something I think they need to do better on, but it's going to be interesting. But yeah, Gamescom was awesome. Day 2 was good. Now what I'm going to do uh, through the remainder of the video is I'm actually going to go on. I've recorded the video that Darren put up, and I'm going to have some thoughts interjected into it to give you my thoughts on what we were seeing with the... Uh, campaign map that he walked us through so hang tight check that out hope you all enjoy hello everybody ahead of the release of our first look at the dark elves campaign tomorrow we wanted to take you on a tour of the entire vortex map for total war warhammer 2. this video will lift the fog of war and show you the starting locations of all the playable races and sub factions the locations of skaven clans will still be hidden but for the explorers out there who want to discover the new world for themselves be mindful that minor spoilers are ahead. Riddled with chaos corruption and roaming Norskin tribes, we'll start out in the Ag Hall Wasteland, the most northeastern point of the map. We're journeying south now, past Albion, toward the north of Ulthuan, where the weather clears up a bit and we encounter the hardy sea folk of Kothik. Alright, so right off the bat, we learn that there are Norskins. Uh, nearby the High Elves, which is interesting. Could lead to some raiding and stuff. You know, they have this fortress, but, you know, you kind of wonder sometimes, like in a Total War game, how well the AI can assault you over sea. I know that it was a really easy way to kill all your enemies in Napoleon and Empire. So, the Norskins being right there, you know, maybe this will be a good way to actually threaten the High Elf tribes and to give them a little challenge, as I'm assuming they're the easy start, and that in fact, that's exactly what Darren says here in a moment. As we venture further south along the chain of sporadic islands of the Eastern Ocean, you'll notice a lot of dangerous and difficult to navigate rocks by the cliffs, a hazard for any seagoing army. As we crest around the southeast of Ulthuan, the mountains cast long shadows on the islands of Ivres. These islands are rich in treasures and exotic sea creatures. Many a plucky explorer has ventured out here looking to make himself rich, only to never be seen again. And we're going to stop right there and talk about a few things. Now, off to the side of the screen here, you can see some rocks. I'm assuming this is going to cause attrition-like damage, or maybe if you travel over it, there's a chance that some of your units could be lost in a shipwreck or something else. Like, I don't know exactly how to work, but I'm guessing in attrition form. The other thing that you can kind of see if you go back and watch the footage just a little bit is there's a sea monster kind of plucking through the surface here. Is it just there for looks? Or is there the possibility that you get attrition from something like that? Is it a monster hunt type thing? I mean, I don't believe there's naval battles in the game, so maybe that's not the case. Maybe it's just for looks, but it was interesting. 
We didn't see anything quite like that on the other map, so maybe it's just a visual improvement. The other thing to note here is it looks like there's ruins out here on this ruins out here on this island. Um, normally the islands you don't get to do a whole lot to you. like you can see all these others with just cliffs around them so obviously you can't land troops on them but this one you're clearly meant to be able to land troops explore the ruins and uh, ruins and uh, it's gonna be pretty neat I like that feature now we arrive at our first playable faction Lothurn under the legendary Lord Tyrion of the High Elves Tyrion starts with a large group of High Elf factions at his back so has a relatively comfortable start position that can be bolstered with trade and defensive pacts to make Ulthuan an impenetrable fortress. Alright, so pretty simply put, Tyrion's gonna be your easier start. Probably a good learner campaign for most people. Starts with a lot of friends, a lot of ways to trade, a pretty familiar feel for people maybe used to Total War or Total War Warhammer, that's what it sounds like to me at least. Turning south now, we'll venture across the Shark Straits to the Land of Assassins next to the coast of Araby currently inhabited by several Bretonian Crusaders who've claimed this land for the Lady. Wait, did he just say Araby? Give me Tomb Kings! Give them to me! No more excuses, Total War. No more excuses. Oh, can you even imagine the poor dwarves, though, if the Tomb Kings came? Aren't they like a mostly chariot faction? Ugh, good grief. The dwarfs of Cobra Pass need pay no attention in their sandy mountain holes as beastmen tribes run rampant along the coastline. Across the land of the Dervishes lies Sudenberg and the Necrock Brotherhood, factions in constant battle for the control of the Shifting Sands, while the Greenskins of Arachnos fight for control of Karakzorn. Here, we encounter our second playable faction. Along the coast of Ruins is where we can find the last defenders, led by Krokgar of the Lizardmen. Alright, so here we see that there's going to be Greenskins, Empire, Dwarves, uh, or colonies of these, I should say, but in any case, factions we're familiar with. And that's where if you want to start as Krokgar for maybe your first Lizardman campaign, you know, he's a melee lord, he's probably a little bit easier to understand, and this is going to be his starting point getting to face off against some of these familiar foes if you've been playing Warhammer 1. So, interesting start position for Krokgar. Aside from roaming beastmen armies, Skaven hordes gather here, no doubt an indication that the ruins here may be infested with the Vermintide. Southward along the shifting mangrove coastline reveals a beautiful coral reef, flanked by a string of ruined settlements. Armies will find landing at these beaches troublesome, as many ships will become stranded and bogged down among the deadly ocean banks, and exploring the ruins can yield riches or awaken unknown ancient magic. Our third playable faction is Clan Moors, led by Queek Headtaker of the Skaven. The High Elves of the Fortress of Dawn have ventured deep into the southern jungles where Queek Headtaker has an... Yeah, I'm just going to pause it here real quick and point out a couple of things. So they're talking about uh, Queek, so we know where the Skaven faction is going to start, starting off against uh, some High Elves here, which is interesting. Um, and then look, there's a dead sea monster up here too. I wonder if this is like explorable stuff again. Can you send an agent here? Do you send a fleet? Can you do anything with this? Is this kind of like the ruins? I don't know, or is it just for looks? Because if it is just looks, it's still pretty cool to like they add some of this stuff in. Anyway, let's keep rolling. Ambush lying in wait. Once dealt with, Queek will only have to look north for conquest. Across the expansive churning gulf, we arrive at the high elf owned citadel of dusk at the southernmost tip of Lustria. The majority of Lustria is comprised of ancient ruins, jungles and swamplands, with the dwarf-controlled spine of Sotek forming the mountainous backbone of the continent. Onwards now to our fourth playable faction at the Turtle Isles, we have the Order of Lore Masters under legendary Lord Teclis of the High Elves. Teclis is quite isolated out here and surrounded by enemies. He'll have a tough time clearing the coastline and linking up with any other high elf factions. Alright, so Teclis is going to be like your more difficult high elves campaign. And again, this is one of the things I just, I absolutely love about Warhammer. You can play the same faction, but each lord is different. Each lord plays different. They have different abilities that make you want to pick different armies for different reasons and different heroes. And they have different start positions now as well, which is something I actually wish they would go back and see if they could actually do something about in Warhammer 1, like for instance making Boris Toddbringer a playable lord and being able to start with Middenheim um, and a couple other ones. Now they did pretty good with all the recent factions in doing that. I'm glad they're continuing this trend into Warhammer 2. It makes the game fun and it makes each faction playable to the fullest extent. You actually want to play with every lord and every start position. So definitely like this. 
as opposed to playing one Germanic tribe and pretty much playing them all. Across the spine of Sotek, we venture out to our fifth playable faction, Clan Pestilence led by Lord Skrulk of the Skaven. Surrounded by the Lizardmen faction of the Southern Sentinels, Lord Skrulk will also find it difficult to push out of the Lost Valley and establish a foothold in the vast jungles of the south. Working our way north now, beyond the ruins of the volcanic islands, we arrive at the Vampire Coast, a corrupted and tainted region eroding away at the lush jungles of the Mosquito Swamps. Further north, beyond the Saddler's Coast at the Isthmus of Lustria, we have our sixth playable faction, Hexodal led by Lord Mazdamundi of the Lizardmen. Mazdamundi is in a bit of a tough spot. He's surrounded by Norskin settlers of the Skeggy, the Greenskin Blue Vipers, and the man-controlled New World colonies, as well as bordering several ruined settlements. Along the far sea- So, Mazdamundi's gonna start off against similar type factions, actually, as Krokgar, but he is much nearer to the Dark Elves, which is about to mention, so that could be a whole different type of issue for Mazdamundi. Plus, he'll play different in the sense that until you- He's never going to be like a giant melee beast. He's going to have a ton of hit points once you get him up on his ancient Steglodon or whatever they call that thing. Um, he'll be very, very tanky in that sense, but he's going to play quite a bit different, so this should be interesting indeed. Let's keep moving. Beyond the Fallen Gates, we encounter the corrupted wastelands of the Ashen Coast. These are harsh lands that few dare to colonize, and where even fewer survive. Eastward, across the Iron Peaks, we have our seventh playable faction, the Cult of Pleasure led by Marathi of the Dark Elves. She spreads her corruption across Nagaroth, consuming all who come into contact with it, friend and foe alike. Nagaroth is largely the theater of the Dark Elves. The coastlines are all inhabited with different Dark Elf factions, and the climate is suitably cold and barren, echoing the torture and death that can be heard billowing out across these lands. All right, I can't help but point this out for a second. I know the Warhammer world is kind of, in some ways, modeled after, modeled after like actual earth in terms of geography and some of the way the races act. So what are they trying to say here, Games Workshop? <laughs> that uh, what would be America, see that's Florida, right? And then here's Maine and everything up here. Um, and then Canada is just full of like these um, horribly pleasure-driven, murderous, rampaging elves. Thanks a lot, appreciate it. But then again, I guess someone has to associate themselves with the vampires and the green skins as well. So I guess we can all take offense together. Nah, I'm just kidding. I don't really take offense to it. I'm just having a little fun here. Let's keep moving. Finally, we'll venture along the Sea of Chill to the Sea of Malice, arriving at our last playable faction, Nagarond, under Malekith, the Witch King of the Dark Elves. So that's it for our quick tour around the Vortex campaign map for Total War Warhammer 2. Tomorrow, we'll join Malekith midway into the campaign as he leads an invasion of Ult-1. Alright, so we get to see more tomorrow. Uh, that was all that we covered today. What'd y'all think of this? Um, I thought this was pretty interesting, actually. And hopefully, uh, if you have any additional insights to my own or you think I got it wrong, please leave comments and tell me what you think. Hope you appreciated the Gamescom footage at the beginning as well do hope you're enjoying it and I will continue. I've got some Total War Arena access. I'm going to try and bring you some Total War Arena soon and I'll have you some footage from that booth as well. But like I said, hope you all enjoyed this. Air of Carthage signing out for now. Please leave your comments. Tell me what you think of the campaign map and tell me whether or not you're excited to see Total War Warhammer 2.